Good everyone, I hope you have an amazing day. Um, so today I'm gonna to talk about uh, Apex Metadata API. Um, so now you must be wondering, right, what the heck is Apex Metadata API, right? So I'll give you a very uh, simple scenario, then we can go through it, the code. Um, so, I mean, this is a pretty common scenario that's explained in the trailhead as well. So let's say you have a field, okay? So you are a company which deals with the multi-org kind of system, right? You have an org, say, for instance, you have an org uh, based on different locations. Say you have, an, say you have an one org for, uh, say, for New Zealand. You have a one org for, um, say, um, in Spain. You have one org, say, in Iceland. You know, I know it, it sounds like a very bad example, but just to give you a context, just please bear with me. So you got three orgs, right? And let's say, uh, you wanted to make a common change to all the org, say adding a field to a contact layout. Say, for instance, I've added a field, um, uh, something called um, that, you know, a, a checkbox, right? So something called meta check, right? And that has to be rolled out to a contact information. Pretty simple, right? I mean, you know, just, you know, field is created, um, which is fantastic. And then, you know, you have to, you know, roll out that to different org and it's you know, pretty simple, right? You just give instruction to your admin once the, you know, to just move the field to, you know, different orgs, right? But imagine, right? That it's kind of, kind of a nightmare step, right? You might have an implementation step, right? Like a post uh, deployment step, right? Where um, you normally uh, tell admins to, you know, to go through the, uh, to the documentation and based on the documentation, you know, you pick that specific field and assign to a uh, different layout. Pretty okay, pretty simple, right? If you are dealing with just one change, imagine there are, you know, 50 changes, you know, and it's just like a nightmare for admin, right? Even though admin is nice and he or she agrees to do so, but it's just not a really good use of their time, right? Um, so that's where an Apex metadata API comes in the picture. Um, so, you know, Apex Metadata API, right? It pretty much lets you make metadata changes directly from your Apex. Um, so, you know, so that, you know, the admin can really do the admin stuff, right? I mean, rather than making a job tedious for a Salesforce consultant, you know, you can pretty much use your Apex um, Metadata API to do the job for you, right? Um, so that's where you're going to pretty much end up in writing a script um and that script pretty much uses the apex metadata api you know to add this the, the field what i talked about the, the the new field to the page layout in all the different orgs directly from your apex how cool is that right so you don't have to do any anything uh from an admin perspective so the code will take care of it right it's like a post install script right so that's where so you need to create a package and package will it install and it will run the post you know, install step, and it will uh, take care of it uh, for you, okay? So what we do in this case, right? So it's, you can automate it, right? So that's exactly what I'm gonna show. I've written the code uh, just to save the time. So what I'll do, I'll just create a, you know, a class, just give a meaningful name, right? This, I know this is shite, the name, <laughs> class name, but it's my apologies for that, I mean, uh, you know, Apex class has to have, you know, a meaningful name. So this is pretty much updating a layout, right? So I said demo meta layout change, right? And then I've uh, created a uh, method here, um, so which returns the metadata dot layout. So it's pretty much gives information. Uh, so what we're doing here is that I'm actually retrieving the layout. And this is the name of the layout, contact contact layout, which is a contact layout. And then, um, you know, I'm actually uh, looking for the section. So where exactly I want to put the field, right? So there is a section called contact information. So once I get the contact information, so I'm getting a section here. So, and then this is looking for the columns and then um, looking for the field and where to add the field. That's pretty much it, it's right? Simple code, nothing fancy here, right? You get, you can get this from a trailhead, but this is, Pretty, pretty simple. I've done that for a couple of changes uh, in the past. Uh, it's pretty handy. Um, then you have uh, something called, um, uh, this is a 
um, callback class. So now the thing is that in the previous class, right, this one, uh, we have created the, the layout field metadata, uh, and so which is and using which we can actually deploy the metadata to our org. Now the deployment is asynchronous, right? So since the deployment is asynchronous, we need to provide a callback so that you know we get notified when the queue deployment complete, right? So we need to have a callback in place. So you know this is pretty cool, right? You're adding a field to the layout, but it takes care of it. Very simple. Um, now, like I said, the deployment is asynchronous. So to keep the asynchronous, to check on it, we need to have a callback. So that's pretty much I'm doing a callback here. Uh, callback is pretty simple. So it implements the metadata dot you know deploy callback uh, interface, and you need to implement uh, void handle. I mean, pretty much returns nothing, right? So handle results, which which contains the params like um, the metadata dot deploy results and callback context. So now we're checking the status. If the deployment is succeeded, you can put it log wherever you want um, or to a custom object or whatever you wanted to do, but just, just to check whether the deployment uh, is completed or not. That's cool. Um, now, now we need to create a deployment container, which is very important. Um, so because now Apex metadata API, right? The, the, the one which we're talking about now, uh, it provides something called metadata.operations.nq development to deploy the metadata to the current org. Um, so uh, what I'll do, I'll just show you this one. I know that it sounds a bit overwhelming, but see, we are in uh, Platform Developer 2, right? So that's why I always encourage you guys, if you do not have experience with de development, please do not take development 2. It's not for you guys yet. I mean, I have an expectation that whoever wants to take uh, Platform Developer 2 has a solid understanding of Apex. If you're a functional consultant trying to attempt Platform Developer 2, that's just absolutely rubbish in my opinion, right? I've seen so many Salesforce functional consultant wants to be a developer and they they think they can code, which is great. I, I really love the confidence, but programming is not just, you know, just come in, walk in, do the, do the shady work and walk away. I mean, that's why we have lots of garbage code because a, a functional consultant decides to be a technical consultant without having a programming background. That's where the disaster kicks in. And I've seen this, and and as, a, as an architect, it makes our job so difficult because all we end up in doing is a cleaning job, right, at the end of the day. I have so many experience in the past, and I just don't want to even talk about it. But that's, sorry, sorry for writing, but, you know, if you find this code difficult, then I, I really think that you shouldn't be taking Platform Developer 2 at this stage. Go back and study well for Platform Developer 1. If you have taken Platform Developer 1, then I I don't know. I don't have anything else to say because you shouldn't be finding this code difficult at, at all. This is very simple code. So I'm building a container, right? This is a – so it's returning metadata.deploy container, and this is a um, – uh, construct, you know, whatever name you wanted to give, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, um, so what I'm doing, I'm just creating a uh, container, um, and uh, I took this from trailer, right? Just, just because, so that you don't blame me from plagiarism. So I, I took it exactly from a trailer, but it's does the, the same job. Um, so, so you're building a instance of a metadata dot uh, the deploy uh, container, and then you are actually uh, using this. Um, layout metadata, which is pretty much this method, which we built here, right? This this method, get meta, um, and then you add to the container. That's, that's all it is, right? And then here you're gonna deploy it. So and this is where the callback comes in picture. And so this is what I talked about. You know, so you you have a container in place, and then you have a callback, right? And um, that's one of the thing I, I I mentioned, right? So you use metadata dot operations dot nq deployment, you know, to deploy the metadata to the current org. Um, so when this method is called, what happens is that deployment request is queued for asynchronous processing. So that's what I was talking about. Okay, now that's all great. Now we need to have the post install script, which actually gets run when using a package. Um, so that's what it is, and this is on install, so it implements install handler. Um, so if you create a package, 
you know, and you specify the, you know, post install script. So you choose the install and, you know, point to this class or whatever name you wanted to give, right? You can, um, and the only thing you have to pay attention to is that um, uh, it's, it should implement uh, this interface, right? And then you use the method on install and so deploy data dot dependence data. So that's this one, right? You're creating an instance of this, uh, the container class, and then you are actually uh, passing the first method, right? So this is what you're doing, and uh, because you're saying, okay, so I'm getting, um, I'm creating instance of a container, and I'm adding this stuff to the container, right? And then I'm passing it, and then I'm deploying it. So this is, uh, you know, um, this is pretty simple, right? So this is deploying because this is where the container, right? You got the container class. Now this is like a modular approach. Uh, you can simplify the code. You know, this is I prefer to do in a modular way because you know, um, then you have pretty much um, control on it, right? Uh, so you can do the you know this is an install script. You can also use uninstall script to do the other stuff. But you know, I would highly encourage you to check it out, read about more uh, about this uh, install handler. Um, it's pretty important uh, at this stage, right? Because you know. Um, you should know, right? I mean, you know, I do understand that in Platform Developer 1, they don't cover these kind of things, which is expected anyways, because Platform Developer 1 is the basic uh, certification to get into development, but it's the most easiest certification, I would say, in, when it comes to development. Uh, Platform Developer 2, a little bit harder, but that's why, you know, they expect you to build a skill from PD1. And when you go to PD2, you should find these things fairly simple to implement, right? Yeah, I understand if you're an admin, you will struggle a bit because you don't have, unless you are you're a developer who became an admin and coming back to development, then it will be pretty sweet for you guys. Right, so that's um, uh, pretty much I wanted to talk about. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is pretty important in my opinion that you should know how to install this stuff, right? You know, we always have to, as a developer, right, or as an architect, it's our responsibility to... Uh, simplify a task, right? Make it more automated so that, you know, we avoid the tedious, you know, um, mini, you know, tedious stuff so that, you know, the deployment process gets smoother, right? Imagine it, you know, even if you have a document in place where it says, okay, the post deployment step, which is great, but, you know, imagine the admin nightmares if you have to do 50 steps in different orgs, right? If you have six orgs to fix, it was like <laughs> an absolute nightmare. So if you can do that using post install, why not, right? Right, so that's pretty much I wanted to uh, talk about today. I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.